Good morning. Could everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, very good. Let's, um, let's get started. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I heard... Uh-oh. Yeah, um, I was looking at the chat, and uh, Teresa can't hear anything. Teresa is, um, is her... Teresa Barnes. Is her... Oh, okay. She got... Okay, she's good. Gotcha. She's good? Uh-huh. Okay. So, again, good morning. Um, I'm Glenn Moorhead, the Deputy Director of Business Operations, Office of Central Services in Prince George's County. Um, I would like to thank all of you for joining us today for the second webinar that is part of the workshop series with the People for Change Coalition and the PFC Black Chamber. And it's brought to you by Prince George's County Supply Development and Diversity Division for small businesses impacted by COVID-19. Our priority to continue to assist you with navigating through these processes. Today's webinar is entitled Digital Media Resources and Tools. The main objective of this webinar is to orient the small business community to digital media tools and resources that you can use for marketing and outreach to your clients. As a result of this webinar, you should be able to incorporate these tools into your businesses if you are not already done so. Hosting with me today again, is Ms. Deborah Carter, the Executive Director of the Supplier Development and Diversity Division, and Mr. Christopher Kelly, the Outreach Manager of the Division, whom you will also continue to hear from throughout this series. Our featured guests who will be facilitating this webinar along with Sandy Pruitt, CEO of the People for Change Coalition, and Jerry McLaren, the President of the People for Change Black Chamber. Today's presenter is Mr. Forrest Givens, who is a freelance multimedia producer and communications professional. Mr. Givens has a number of years of experience in photography, graphic design, videography, and sound design. He has worked with notable clients such as Facebook, Clark Construction, the Jack and Jill Society of America, and Virginia Commonwealth University Arts Department. As an undergraduate of VCU, Mr. Givens invested a great deal of time working in various communication roles. He developed his passion for multimedia after creating a series of short films and audiovisual compilations. Mr. Givens received his Bachelor of Science in Mass Communication with a concentration in Creative Advertisement from VCU. So at this time, I will turn the webinar over to Ms. Sandy Pruitt, and we certainly appreciate all of you for your participation in our webinar series. And Ms. Pruitt, you can take it away. Uh, thank you, Glenn, for the warm welcome. We are excited about the partnership with the uh, Office of Central Services and Supplier Development and Diversity Division. Uh, you all are in for a treat this morning with our presenter, Mr. Forrest uh, Givens. And just uh, to share with you, um, to mark your calendars also uh, for three other upcoming workshops. You'll hear more about these workshops later, but these workshops are to help our small businesses as they reopen their doors during COVID-19. We're gonna be doing Business Development 101. You're gonna be learning about other online meeting platforms and how to write an effective capability statement. Uh, just a little bit about the PFC Black Chamber and the PFC Coalition. Uh, the PFC Black Chamber is a membership organization. It's representing black businesses in the county. The mission of the, of the Black Chamber is to strengthen the capacity of our black businesses to help them thrive in their communities. The uh, chamber also serves as a collective voice. We also are a, a PFC coalition, is a membership organization representing over 300 nonprofits and minority businesses, whose mission is to build the capacity of the nonprofits and minority businesses by providing assessment, support, and expansion services. Our 
title for today, Digital Media Resources and Tools to Help Grow Your Business. Our presenter is Forrest Gibbons, and we heard his uh, presentation in his bio, and Forrest may want to share a little more. But we are excited to have Forrest and his vast experience in photography, graphic design, digital media. Uh, he also helps to support businesses and nonprofits. And we've done a number of projects with Mr. Forrest Gibbons, and he does a great job. So again, I'd like to welcome Mr. Forrest Gibbons, and we're going to uh, share the screen with Mr. Gibbons right now so if we can pause for a second. Okay, well, thank you so much for the um, introduction, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, let me go ahead. Uh oh. Sorry, let me go ahead and go back to my presentation. Sorry about that. Give me one second. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Okay, cool. So thank you so much, guys, for the introduction. It feels very like humbling. I'm like, wow, I did all this stuff. And you guys make it sound cooler than it is. But thank you again. Um, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us. This is going to be a great presentation. It's going to be a lot of engagement, a lot of visuals, so hope you all are excited and ready to go. So let's go ahead and go to our first slide. So I know um, Sandy and Mr. Moorhead gave a great introduction earlier, but this is just a continuation to explain some of the stuff I do. I'm a freelance multimedia content producer. And to the right, these are a couple of areas of expertise that I specialize in and have worked in. Um, one being social media content creation. So just creating a variety of different content for social media channels such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I do creative consulting doing everything to help brands visualize ideas from conception to creation. Um, and that can range from, you know, brand strategy guide, a style guide, creating guides to help brands get started with their visual identity. Also do photography, videography, and graphic design. So my next slide um, is gonna be a participatory slide. So I wanted to take about three to four businesses and have you guys state your name, a brief description of your business and some things that you hope to learn. I realize there are a lot of participants, so if you guys could please raise your hand and let us know and we'll go ahead and unmute you in the chat. Okay, let's see, we got, okay. Okay, Sandy, you see any um participants raising their hands in the chat? Yes, we have a few. Um, Let's see, Wanda Childs, and maybe uh, Darren Taylor and John Hogan's. So in that order, and we wanna make this uh, interactive. So throughout the presentation, we'll just have a few people to uh, interact with the presenter. And if, Wanda, if you can just state your name, uh, a brief description of your business and, and what you do. Um, yes, this is Wanda Child. I have two businesses, well, three here in the county. The first one is a custom printing company. It's 25 years old. We do promotional items, stamps, keychains, t-shirts, water bottles, literally 80,000 different things custom printed with your logo. That company is called Printing Express and Design. Most people are more familiar with my second company that is 24 years old called Blessed 24-7. That is a retail brand. That is a gift shop I have on Central Avenue where I sell my trademark brand called Bless 24-7. And that is merchandise um, that is printed with the brand name. So it's two sides of me. I'm a custom printer, Printing Express, and then I'm a retail side called Bless 24-7 gift shop. Okay, we got Darren Taylor. Good morning. Uh, my name is Darren Taylor. I'm a representative with uh, Smart One Management uh, Solutions. Uh, we're a woman-owned small business located in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Been in business for uh, about eight, we're going on nine years now. Uh, we specialize in government contracts and providing program management, data analytics, uh, project management, and financials and acquisitions. And um, I'm here to, I would like to learn how to diversify our company outreach and also um, possibly modernize our tech in, in, in the same field and, and keeping up and get our name out there. 
Okay, John Hogans. Hi, this is John Hogans. Good morning, everyone. I've run a training institution and contracting residential and commercial building. And I would like to learn these tools and be able to use the tools to do business uh, better in our community and worldwide. Okay, that was a wonderful variety of different businesses, different industries and sectors. And thank you so much, Sandy, for facilitating it. Well, thank you guys for introducing yourselves. I want to be, you know, face to face because it will be more interactive. But I appreciate you guys taking this virtual call. So we'll go ahead and proceed on to the next slide. So here's a quick agenda today for the overview. I know you guys are in various sectors and a lot of people want to use these tools to modernize their business, enhance their outreach and, you know, better their communities. And I hope that we can do so. It'll be a good foundation. So I'll just go over all of our areas. So the first area is brand and identity. So we're going to discuss the state of your brand's visual identity and explore some tools to improve its image. We're going to talk about creative assets and resources that can make the content creation process easier for your business so you can be more visible and cohesive on your online web platforms. We're going to talk about content creation, how to actually create visually engaging content that can attract new customers and strengthen existing relationships. We're going to talk about content automation, just how to save you valuable time because you don't want to spend all your time making content. I completely understand. Uh, we're going to talk about your web presence and how it makes it easier for customers and potential customers to find your business and spend money with you. And finally, we're going to talk about email marketing. We're not going to get super deep into the concept of email marketing, but we're going to touch on tools and resources to help you if you aren't already aware of them. So let's go ahead and proceed from here. So I have a quick question. I thought this would be cool. How does a brand's identity influence customers? So if we have anybody who wants to raise their hand or give this a shot, you may already know, but I figured I'd throw it out there for you guys. Uh, does anybody want to, if you want to um, respond, please raise your hand and we will unmute you. Okay, we have a Wanda Childs, did you want to uh, respond? Or Jeff Walker, who hasn't done uh, Respondent Jeff Walker. How does a brand's identity influence customers? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. We got you. Hey, thank you. Well, I believe that you know, uh, you know, uh, organizational or companies brand helps influence customers because it allows one of several things. One, it allows the customer to be able to relate to the brand. Um, it also helps the customer identify what are the, the benefits and do I fit in with this uh, brand and does the brand actually represent what my organization represents or um, how do I, uh, how do the customers receive the brand in terms of like, you know, does, does it fit in with, uh, you know, my, my ethics um, and does it fit in with like my moral standings as well. That's a great response. Yeah, that was that was wonderful. We got to have you teach the class now. <laughs> you got it. Thanks, man. No problem. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and proceed. That was a wonderful response, and I couldn't agree more. So the way I like to explain it is if you were going to meet one of your clients, right, and you wanted to close a business deal or get a new partner for a new business adventure. So most people like to talk over coffee or breakfast. So let's say you walk into a meeting room and you have your cup of coffee and the person that you're talking to has this blank cup. It doesn't have any logos, no branding on it. You don't really care for it, right? It's just a cup, like big deal, right? But what if that cup had a Starbucks logo? You know, that would kind of change subconsciously how you feel about the person, but how you feel about the brand. You may like Starbucks. You not, might not really care for Starbucks, but you acknowledge the brand and what it represents, the tonal and the ethical values. And let's take it a step further. And let's say it was a Wells Fargo coffee cup. <laughs> now, Wells Fargo clearly doesn't make coffee, but there's a lot of negative sentiment and, you know, corruption with that's associated with the brand so you may see that person with that wells fargo cup and say oh well, i don't want to do business with this guy i don't like wells fargo 
<laughs> so brands have a lot of psychological power and subconscious influence on people and their perception. Okay. And going back to your brand's visual identity, it's very important to make a good first impression. You want to be sure that your logos, your color choice, your fonts, and your aesthetic convey the message of your business relatively quickly because, you know, people are short on time and they don't have all day to figure you out, especially if this is the first impression. So a good example of this was this um, stationary design set. So a brand that I chose was Target. You know, it's very well known. The logo is very simple. Literally, it's a circle with a target. Like <laughs> it doesn't get, you know, more simpler than that. But I thought this was a good visualization because it shows you your brand across different stationary and web platforms. And I know um, Wanda spoke earlier about her printing, so I'm sure she can tell you a whole bunch <laughs> about having your brand in these different um, arenas and avenues. So this is a great segue to our next resource for you guys, which is a logo and brand identity designer. So this website uses artificial intelligence to help you create logo ideas and concepts for your brand. It offers a full suite of branding deliverables from, you know, T-shirts, business cards, stationery, logos, uh, sorry, business cards, <laughs> um, notebooks, pencils, etc. And this is a really, really great website because it generates a mock-up of everything how it'll look instantly and they have packages where you can get like a header for your social media channel different logos for your um social and web channels so what we're going to do we're actually going to go to this website really quick because it's one thing to talk about it but i'll show you guys a live demonstration so i see we have a question um this platform isn't relatively expensive i believe it's about 40 to 50 bucks depending on your plan I'll go ahead and uh, navigate to it so you guys can see what I'm doing over here. Give me one second. And, and also, I just want to share while Boris is going out to the site, we will be sharing the links to all the resources that he presents in uh, this presentation. We'll be sharing that with all the participants. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate it. And can everybody, you guys can see my screen pretty clear? Everything's good? Yes. Okay, cool. That's perfect. All right. Okay, and I had a question from uh, Tisha Taylor. Tisha Tyler, my apology. Um, the the recording will be, it will be recorded, and we definitely can share it with you guys, no problem. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in really quick. Let's hope I got my password right. <laughs> okay, cool. That's great. Sorry about that, having a little bit of difficulty getting my mouse. My apologies. Let's try this one more time. Okay. Okay. Always some uh, technical challenges whenever you're presenting. It's all right. And we got it. Perfect. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go through this platform and try to create a logo from scratch right so it's going to ask me a couple of filler questions oh okay and the name of this website is called looka it's uh right here in the top corner if you didn't see it so i'm gonna um go through a couple of questions right so let's just say my industry is photography so i'm going to put that in and i'll go ahead and hit next sorry the zoom panel is in the way i'll move this up here go ahead and hit next so automatically it's just going to ask me to pick a couple of logos that i already like you know the aesthetic the composition so i'm just going to pick a couple random ones you know that one's all right let's see this one is decent this one is all right okay so i picked a couple references to help the artificial intelligence generate some ideas and i'm going to go ahead and punch in some colors i'll do blue yellow and red okay Okay, all right. I'm just gonna say my company name is, let's just say blank photography. Okay, and I don't have a slogan, so I'll just continue. 
okay what kind of symbols do i want i'll do uh camera photo and light just filling out these fillers okay and if you guys don't already know so look is a, a a graphic design platform that uses artificial intelligence to create logos and design packages for your brand so right now I'm just going through a couple of examples that it made for me so these are just you know really really quick examples it has my name of my business some iconography and it's great to just like generate some ideas so at any point you can you can change your name so I'll just say I'll just put in John Doe as an example and I'll say, um, I'll add a slogan. I'll say, uh, we get the job done. Okay. And then I'll say, save my changes. So then you can see like it instantly changes a lot of what I'm looking for. And you can always go in and edit. So I'm just going to go with this one really fast and I can edit this logo. Okay. Of course. So are you saying that they can put in their industry quickly and this will generate. Can we try another industry, maybe uh, the health or construction or technology? Yeah, sure. No problem. Um, so I'll go ahead and go back and let's see. I'll do construction instead of photography. So I'll change my industry to construction and I'll continue. And I'll go ahead and pick a couple of examples that I thought were nice. Um, let's do this. Uh, okay, and we'll continue. And I'll just change my brand colors to, I'll just do a blue. Okay. And for the name of my business, let's say we'll call it CC Construction. Okay. Um, as far as the symbols that I want to pick, I'm going to pick Construction and Architecture. And those will just be symbols that will be loaded into the presets and the options that I get when I use the generator. So I'll go ahead and continue. All right, now they're generating some designs for me. And earlier I told you guys you can adjust the parameters in here, right? So you can change your name at any time that you want. And you could also add a slogan and you can adjust your colors. So I'll just put a slogan in. I'll say, we get the job done. Okay, and I'll capitalize that T and I'll save my changes. See your changes. Okay, and we got a couple examples here. I'm just gonna scroll down, see what we got as a starting point. Okay, I'm gonna load a few more just to get a solid base. Okay. I'll go with uh, this one right here is just an example reference. So I'll hit continue. Okay, so once you have like a rough idea or you have a good starting point for your logo, it's gonna give you a lot of different options to customize it, right? So immediately we start seeing, if we scroll down, we can see some mockups for a business card. We can see some mockups for like a Facebook cover for our um, Facebook profile if we wanna go that route. And we can also see some stationary mockups. So we see the print, the business card, the letterhead, and this is just to give you a good like overview of what your brand will look like once it's fully flushed out. So I'm just gonna keep on scrolling down, see some more business card options. We can see we got some mockups for like merchandise, t-shirts and signage. Now I'm gonna go back up to the top of this page and I'm gonna just edit a couple of things, right? So if I wanna change any of my fonts, I can, whoops. We got so, of course, you're saying this uh, platform has a lot of flexibility in <laughs> terms of design. Yes, absolutely. It has a lot of flexibility in terms of design, and it's great for creating ideas fast. Like, I've worked with a lot of businesses, and they'll need logos fast or they need mock ups fast. So, if you wanted to just take things into your own hand and communicate with the designer and say, hey, I want a logo like this, this is exactly how I want it. Or you could create it yourself if you just didn't feel like going through the transaction with the designer. So I'm just gonna mess with a few parameters so you can make um, the size bigger of this main CC construction type if you want. You can make it 
uppercase, change it to lowercase. Um, they have a lot of different colors. If I want to do like, you know, color variations on the text. Let's see, you can change, you can change just about um, everything on here. Uh, let's see, so if I go to symbol, we can get like some different symbols that come up. So we can go with this sort of like flower if we want it. And we have a whole bunch of different options. So I'm not gonna go through every single thing on the platform, just wanted to give you guys a quick overview. And now we're gonna try to like check out if it's as if we wanted to buy this product. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go buy. And here you can see the different packages for the pricing for this service, right? So if you wanted a basic um, rendering of this, you could do, you would get like the logo file. And we have a few other options. So I'm gonna go ahead and return back to the presentation. And I'm gonna go ahead and resume the share on here. Give me one second, just gotta go back here. Okay, here we go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and continue. And I have a follow-up question for you guys. Does any of you all's business sell products online? I know uh, Wanda talked about her commerce platform and her in-person too, but if anybody else wanted. Yeah, we heard, yeah, we heard a few earlier online. So I think, yeah, a number of people probably are selling online. So that's, um, and if they're not, that's where they definitely, the direction they need to be headed. Okay. All right, cool. So we'll go ahead and proceed. And if you guys are selling products online, one of the main hurdles for a lot of businesses is getting high quality photography for their products and their services, right? So if you have t-shirts and you need your t-shirts photographed on a white background, or you have any other type of physical item, sometimes you don't have the time to get the photographer or to pay for everything. So this is a great service that's offered by Square. So basically you send in your physical products that you want to sell on your website and they take high quality pictures of those objects and then they send it back to you. And the prices from for this service are $10 to $30 per item that you have. So the $10 option you would get, let's say you have a lamp, right? For $10 of that lamp, you would get three different photos. So you would get like a frontward facing photo, a side shot, and an additional shot you can specify your shot types and for the $30 option so this will be $30 per object you would get a 360 set of images that would complement your brand so I'll just go here really quick I'm going to take about maybe 30 seconds just to show you guys exactly how this works. So let me go ahead and share this with you. So this is the website and um, just a note, because of COVID, they're temporarily closed, but once everything resumes, then you guys can proceed with the service. So this is the website. I'm just gonna scroll down so you can see the products that they have right here. And this is the process. You ship the product, they shoot it in their studio and they give you about 14 days. Within 14 days, you'll receive the photos. Okay. So Forrest, do you see more businesses moving towards the direction of actually sending their products to um, a service provider and getting, or are people reluctant to use it? Or is this something where people need professional photography? This is a, a more cost effective way. Absolutely. It's a more cost effective way because, you know, professional studio photography can be expensive and also people need the turnaround to be very fast. So if they're busy and they want to ship stuff in, this is a great option to save time and money. So um, this was the photo pack I was telling you guys about. So for $10, you would ship in your product and then you would get three different angles of that product for $10. So if you have five or six products, you can do the math on that. And this is the $30 option that I spoke about earlier. So per item, it'll be $30, but you get a 360 set of photos if you want your product to be more interactive and more engaging for your um, website or experience. So I'll go ahead and navigate back to the PowerPoint. And for us, another question that was um, earlier on the lookup mm -hmm. website, uh, people were asking, is this inspiration for people that are planning on um, designing or it's a starting point for like a new business or an existing business? 
to help them give them some inspiration, maybe before they go with a professional uh, designer to help them? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's some um, a great ideation platform. You know, you may have an idea for your logo and how you want it to look, but you may not be able to draw or physically produce it in the software. So it's great for getting ideas, sketches to your designer and helping them understand exactly what it is you want. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so now that we have the visual identity and the overview of your brand out of the way, we're going to talk about creative assets. So creative assets can be used to help market your brand effectively and creatively. They can be used multiple times for various purposes. And as far as categorizing your creative assets, it's good to have like a digital managed asset management system. In the same way you would have like a Gmail to keep all your emails categorized or um, a folder to keep another certain type of documents. It's the same thing for your digital assets. So some examples of creative assets are can be logos and graphics, photos and videos, um, some print or web collateral and audio recordings or music. Say if you have a podcast or something of that sort. OK, so I'm going to go ahead. Are you saying to keep? all of your creative assets in one location or uh yeah so yes and no um it's good to have all of your assets in one location so you can easily create or access things but um most platforms that let you download creative assets already have that feature built in for you if that answers it you was was that um answers your question i guess helping to organize creative your creative assets do you organize them or do you let the third party provider organize those creative assets um so great question sandy so it's a combination i use the third party to organize my assets and i also use dropbox to keep everything in one place as well okay so i'm going to go ahead and continue and and let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow. I just want to be mindful of time and everything. So going to our next slide. This was an analogy I thought made sense, right? So if you think of creative assets like ingredients to a recipe, right? You want to start off with like high quality ingredients because you want to make a great meal at the end of it, right? So whenever you're using creative assets, always try to get high quality assets and things that look good initially so that the final product will be better. And I'm going to give you guys some examples of some creative assets on the next slide. So right here, these are examples of different types of creative assets. So on the top left corner, I have an image, high quality resolution image. If I needed some stock photography next to that, I have a template for like a landing page, right? If I had a website and I wanted to change one of my pages, I could use this asset to help me get started with that. Um, in the bottom corner here, I have a couple of fonts. And beside that, I have like a mock-up of like an iPhone if I wanted to put my brand logo there. And on the right, this is a quick infographic template on social distancing, just in case I want to communicate with my business or my customers about COVID or how to social distance properly. Um, let's see. Do we have any questions on any of this stuff so far, Sandy? So far, so good? Uh, so far, so good. Yes. Okay, perfect. And, and again, if people do have questions, if you'd like to post your questions in the Q&A, um, and somebody did ask about the, um, is Dropbox a better tool to use than a Google Drive? Oh, man, that's a good question. I would say... It depends on what you're doing, right? If you have a lot of files that you need to store and that you need to share often, I think that Dropbox is easier in that regard because whenever you share stuff via Dropbox, it's easier to download and view as opposed to Google Drive where you have to like share, give access and have multiple layers of like clearance. Dropbox is easier for sharing. So it depends. I'm not going to give a definitive answer, but that's just that's my opinion. It depends on what you're doing. Okay, and <laughs> this is funny. So the whole reason that we use creative assets and services is that so we can work smarter, not harder, right? Everybody here might not be a graphic designer or a photographer or a videographer, but they wanna have high quality material. So 
we're going to talk about asset subscription services that can help you work smarter, not harder. And uh, before we move on, somebody had a quick question, I guess, about lookup. Mm -hmm. Is it only for logo sketches? Um, uh, primarily, yeah. It's, it's pretty much for like logos and yeah, just, just logo creation. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. And I had a quick question for you guys. So what websites are you all currently using to find images? So if you want to post on social, your website. If people want to chime in, if you uh, raise your hand, we can share. Uh, uh, John Hogan, did you have a question? Okay. I saw Creative Cloud. No, man. Okay, I can see some in the chat too. So I see some people say Google, Creative Cloud. Um, let's see. I heard a question about how to use those pictures, Canva. Okay, cool. So I see um, Google was a pretty popular one. So I wanted to just show you guys some additional features that you can use with Google to get images that are proper licensed and to your liking. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Google really fast. And let me share my screen on here so you guys can see it. So right now, I'm just going to do a quick Google search, right? So I'm just going to say I'm searching business. And if I go to my images panel right here, I'll move this out of the way so you guys can see it. So we got a lot of options here in Google. So you guys may already know this, but just wanted to reiterate it. So up here at the top, at this top panel, you can adjust your parameters of what you're looking for. So if you go to the tool setting, you can specify the size that you're looking for, you know, large, medium, small, the color, the usage rights, you know, to make sure you're not using copyrighted images, you can use stuff labeled for non-commercial or non-commercial useful modification. Um, and you can specify the types, the time, and the last thing we have is just some advanced settings. So if you really want to get super particular with it, you can narrow down your image search, the specific size, you know, like if you want to go larger than 70 megapixels, big file, and the aspect ratio of anything too. So just wanted to share that with you all just in case um, you may not have been aware of it. Okay. And in addition to Google, we also have a few other platforms that are great for getting high quality assets. So I know somebody mentioned Canva and we're definitely gonna talk about and dive into Canva, absolutely. Let's see. Okay, just um, checking the chat right now and I see you guys have Adobe Stock, Pixabay and a couple of other good resources, so that's perfect. So of Whoops. course, um, there are a lot of options in terms of what you can use as a small business. Um, do you recommend people pick one or two? I mean, because it can get expensive if you have subscriptions to multiple. Um, what's your recommendation for small businesses who are on you know, a, a small budget? Uh, great question. So I would say uh, Canva is the most like flexible and easy to use option. It's not super expensive and you have a wide variety of assets too. I think if you reach a plateau with Canva where you just can't get the stuff that you want and it seems very limiting to you, then I would say maybe branch off to an additional asset subscription service in addition to Canva. So you have both of those working together. Cool. So um, I planned on. Oh, sorry about that. I keep going, <laughs> keep going back and forth there. So I see a couple of you guys are already familiar with a lot of these platforms. Okay, so somebody said they use Canva and Envato Elements. That's wonderful. I'm just going to do a really quick tour of Adobe Stock and Envato Elements for people who may not be familiar with it. So I'll take like a 10 to 20 second overview to show you guys this. So this is Adobe Stock and they have a lot of different creative assets for you guys to use. So they have stock photos, illustrations, vectors, stock videos, a lot of templates and everything. So I'll just do a quick example, right? So let's say your business is hosting an event and you need to make a flyer for an upcoming event. So I'm gonna go to templates and I'm just gonna search flyer. 
So just a note about Adobe stock, um, they usually work with like Adobe software. So if you have like Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, et cetera, um, these will usually help you in those software. So let's say I saw a flyer that looked cool. This would be a great start for me to design as opposed to having to reach out to somebody and spend a lot of time. All of this is supposed to save you a lot of time and money. Okay, and another a couple of other things we can do. If you need some images, they also have images that you could design as, and download as well. So just a super quick overview of that platform. Um, the next one on our list is Envato Elements. Um, I know somebody in the chat, Tisha, I believe. I apologize for if I messed up your name. Let me double check, make sure I got it right. Yep, it was Tisha, Tisha Tyler, yep. So this is uh, Envato Elements, and this is the second asset subscription service. They have a wide variety of uh, resources, so they have everything from stock video, templates, music, sound effects, graphics, presentation templates. So I'm just gonna quickly browse through and just show you guys what some of this stuff looks like. So it's a pretty cool interface if you're looking for stuff or you need to make a presentation, it's a great starting point for you. And the last feature that I wanted to show you all about Envato Elements is that you can have all of your assets stored in one location and you can make different collections of assets to group it. So I'll just show you what I have really quick. So if I go to my collections, you can see all of the different projects that I have these assets for. So if I go, if I go um, here, this was like a logo design that I was working on for a client. So you can see I have like all of my fonts that I use for it and all of my ideas in one central place. So it just groups them and organizes it for you. It's a really cool feature. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my presentation and let's see what we got. So I'm gonna go to the next slide. And in addition to the asset subscription services, we also have some stock photography services. If you guys need stock photography for free and you wanna be able to access it quickly. So these are a couple examples. One is called Unsplash, Pexels, and this third one is called uh, Burst by Shopify. So it's just a stock photography service for small business as well. Let me double check our chat just to see. Okay, great, great feedback, Tisha. Tisha is killing it in the chat. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so really quick, guys, I'm going to give you a quick um, website visit to each of these three services. I'll make it brief. So bear with me while I share my screen. So this is the first service is called um, Unsplash. They have free stock photography, high resolution images for you. So if we just scroll down, we can see a little bit of what they offer. So pretty cool, kind of straight to the point. The next one is Pexels. So I'll go ahead and go to Pexels really quick. And Pexels is like literally very similar to Unsplash, right? stock photography service but they also have videos as well so if you need stock photography or you need stock videos you can get them for free on this website so this is a great website and the final one that we have on there is going to be shopify burst so i'm going to go to shopify burst i'll just google search it and here we go and again uh, this is sandy again uh, all of the resources and tools that are displayed in the presentation we will be sending everyone will be getting a link uh, to those uh, websites to access those tools and resources thank you so much sandy i i, I have been in that situation where you're seeing a presentation you're like what is this can i take it down i don't want to miss it so don't worry you're not going to miss out on anything we have all the links for you guys to check out so this is a uh, Shopify burst and it's more geared towards websites, blogs and online services that sell products. So same thing, stock photography, they have a lot of different categories that makes it easier to find stuff, but they're pretty much very similar. So now I'm going to a question because yep. I mean, it can be a lot with the stock photos. Do you find that some of the, um, 
service providers are leaning towards doing categorizing just only certain types of stocks, photos for certain types of businesses, or are most of them trying to get in so many categories so they don't lose a customer? That's a great question, Sandy. So it depends on the target audience that the business is targeting, right? So uh, asset subscription service like a Shutterstock has a wide variety of assets, right? They have basically like every category that you will want versus um, like uh, Envato Elements that may have more limited content. Let's say, for example, like if you're looking for people of color or, you know, diverse types of content, they may be more limited in that. So it just depends on the service that you're going for. But I found it's hard to find stock photography and stock video of people of color. Like it's incredibly difficult. So more and more content is coming out, but it's, it's a slow, it's a slow thing. <laughs> But uh, but great question. So I'm going to go ahead and return to the presentation now. And we're going to go ahead and continue. Here we go. So when it comes to content creation, content is king. You know, I'm sure you guys have heard this over and over and over again, but it's a form of currency in the digital age. Right. People's attention is getting more and more difficult to grasp and they have less time to engage with a lot of content that's happening. So to avoid this, you want to make sure you are creating engaging, thumb stopping content, right? If somebody's scrolling on social media, you want them to stop and look at your content. That's the most ideal scenario. And the last thing that's most important is making cohesive content across your platforms, right? So if somebody has, I know Wanda mentioned her t-shirt brand earlier and her print production service that she offers. If she had one name for her business on Facebook. It should be the same on Twitter. It should be the same on Instagram and on her website so that people can easily be unified through all platforms that are related to her brand. Okay. Okay, great. Sorry, just checking a message, guys. My apology. I'm going to go ahead and proceed to the next slide. And these are just a couple of questions to ask yourself when you're creating content or reviewing content that you want to engage with your business in. So the first question to ask is, does this content engage my audience? Is it attention grabbing, right? Like, would you personally stop and watch this if you were on your own account or online? And does it add value or is it relevant to your audience? You know, is it something I can use in my daily life today that'll benefit me. A few other questions I like to ask as well. Does this content provide a clear call to action? Like when I view your content, do I know where to go, what website to click on, what hashtag to use? And this is additional. You don't have to do this, but when posting, I like to get the five W's, the who, what, when, where, and why. So when people see your stuff, they're not just like, oh, well, what is this? What does this guy do? Why does this matter? You know, you want to at least give them some informational overview as to what they're looking at. And the final question is, is it shareable? You know, would I share this with my friends and my family? And that's a good indicator of potential for content to go viral, because if it goes viral organically, it's through people just sharing it and seeing it on their own behalf. Of course, we have a question that someone wants to know. They're trying to grow three businesses under one company. And so they want to know, does it matter if the logos and content are different? That's a great, that's a really great question. Wow. I would say, okay, think about a big company that does that. Oh, sorry about that. Give me one second, guys. Let me go back. Think about a big company that does that now, like Amazon, right? They have the Amazon primary logo and then they have all the variations. So like Amazon Music, Amazon Prime, Amazon everything. There's so many Amazon brands. And same thing with the Google. Like they have Google, Google Images, Google Business. So I would say my advice would be use elements from your primary logo and evolve them in your other two logos, right? So take your main logo and make small changes to it so they all sit together. If you're given a PowerPoint presentation and you put all three of your logos together on one slide, they should seem to be related, but not like totally opposite, if that makes sense for you. Okay. I see. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking at the chat right now and I see your um, continued uh, question. 
Ah, I see. Okay. Um, so just for you guys that may not be able to see the chat, um, the business that we're working with, they have three ideas that are somewhat different and kind of unrelated. So my advice for that would be to have this is all you have to do, right? Even if they're all different, keep one element that unifies all of those brands. So that could be it could be your logo. Let's say your logo was um, Envision Modeling Excellence, right? You could have a small tag in the corner that says a company by blah, 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 or a blah, blah, blah company. So when people see it, they know this is the company that it's associated with, if that helps. But that's a great question. So, so what, we're, what I'm hearing from you, Forrest, is that they should keep at least one element uh, that yeah. can connect the different um, entities that are associated with that business or connect those businesses. Absolutely, just one element, right? Everything doesn't have to be completely uniform, but as long as you have like one unifying piece, I think it'll help tie everything together. Could it be a color or? Yeah, it could be um, a color, a font. It could be a, a, um, a iconography, a icon element. It could be a lot of different things. So I hope I hope that helps. I'm going to go ahead and um, go on to the next slide. So this is an example of uh, advertisement for a project management tool called Monday.com. I thought this was a great example of visually engaging content and something that gets you to stop what you're doing and check it out. Some of you guys may have seen it before because it was a large YouTube campaign, but I'll go ahead and start it. Here we go. This is an ad for a project management tool called Monday.com. This is what it looks like and this is what it feels like. So the tool works like this. We call this a board. Just put everything you need to do here, then put who's in charge of it here, and see where everything stands here. Also, it works on your phone because it's 2019. Click, drag, and drop to create your board exactly the way you need it. You'll never drop the ball on the important stuff again. So go to monday.com and create your free account today. So I thought that was just very visually engaging content, right? Like they get your attention and tell you about the brand, what it is, why you should care about it. And then they explain exactly how everything works. So I thought that was a pretty cool reference and example. All right, we're gonna go ahead and proceed to the next example. This is an Oh, uh-oh, <laughs> that's funny. So this next example is a brand introduction video for Morgan State University, and it gives testimonials as to why people should attend the school, the benefits of the school. I thought this could be very applicable to a lot of businesses here, right? Because you want people to know what type of services you offer, and using testimonials can be a great way for people to believe you and have credibility with, with your statements you're trying to make. So I'll go ahead and start this video. Here we go. It's about a minute long. Socially here at Morgan State University, my favorite aspect is just the community of campus. Being from Baltimore myself, I always tell people that Baltimore has kind of an atmosphere of a small town. And that's kind of the atmosphere you get here at Morgan. My social experience here at Morgan State, it was definitely enjoyable. My team was definitely welcoming as well. There's a lot of events that go on at campus that everyone can get involved for, and like everyone, there's frats, sororities, everything that happens at the student center, there's great concerts and everything, and it's really fun. Morgan gives them a chance, and then catapults them into a realm of making a difference worldwide. When our students leave Morgan, that they're prepared to conquer the world. The relationship I have with people through organizations, because I met a lot of my friends through Bear TV and Future and Lunch Table. So just getting out there and meeting new people is probably my favorite. My advice would be to really enjoy your experience. Don't be so caught up in always being in your room. Really go out there and experience Morgan because it's a really fun school. So that was a, I, personally, I selected this example because I like the tone of the video. It was very like upbeat, easygoing, you know, it, it kind of like put me at ease. So one thing I liked about this video is that it's pushing your customers through the funnel, right? So the previous example that we showed, oh yeah, probably. It's so probably not going to work. Sorry, give me, give me one second. So this previous example was a great example of like the introduction or the conversation you have with your potential client, right? You tell them what your business is, what you offer, and how they can learn more. And then as they get to know you, 
you tell them why your service is a value from other people. You have other people vouching on your behalf to, you know, sell your product even more. So I thought this was like a great journey just to show how it continues. Okay. We got um, any questions or anything in the chat? Uh, let me double check the chat. Nope, I think we can probably move on. Oh, you know, I, there actually is one. Um, somebody had a question about a uh, project management tool recommendation, uh, Monday.com, Airtable, Notion, and Asana. I've personally used Monday.com, and it's really, really easy and very simple. I've, I haven't used Airtable, but I've heard good things about it. My personal recommendation would be to try Monday um, just because I used it. But great question okay and we're going to proceed so this is an example of social media content that directly engages the audience so i thought this was really good so i'll just read it from the top so angels off we're looking for a new design for our pretty prince bath tissue comment on your favorite a b c or d so this is very intentional content that was designed to engage with the audience right you can see the corresponding tissue with the letter below it so I thought this was a great way to really engage with your customers and get a good response out of them, right? Like make them a part of a decision that you want to make with your brand. It makes people feel more personal, like you're directly speaking with them. So I thought this did a good job at that. Our next example is a live stream event and how promoting events can give your business leverage as content on social media, right? So this guy, Tim Ferriss, he's having a appearance at an event in Dallas, Texas on September 7th and 8th. Now, as far as the design is simple, you know, it tells you where it's going to be, the business that's hosting it and the time that he's going to be present. And it also has a link. So it answers the five W's is visually pretty good. You know, I wouldn't say it's the greatest design in the world, but it's it's pretty visually great as content and it tells your audience exactly what to do and where to go and i think that live streaming can give your audience a closer connection to you and your business because it's a direct connection and wake up the whole pandemic it gives you a, another medium to connect and relate with other people uh, for someone that had another question mm -hmm. in terms of businesses um, that offer services only uh, what are your recommendations for uh, tools for them specifically if they just offer services and not maybe not a product um if you offer services and not a product i would give your audience a live demonstration of that service being done right so let's say you're a consultant business you know i would say if you're doing like zoom calls you know record that conversation with your client if they're open to be being recorded or just take a snippet and you know post that to your social media just show your product or your service being used by other people and the value that it has i feel like showing that will give people a lot of insight on it as well feel like that that answer your question that's that's good for you sandy um, yes that's great thank you okay no problem Okay, um, so the next piece of content, I'm sure you guys have seen this multiple times. So this is called the pop-up display banner. So if you're browsing through a website, you'll be looking at a few products and then an offer will pop up. Usually people click or X out of it, but it's really great for generating leads. So this is an example of that. And I like this because the copy is very clever and the image matches the copy exactly right so like get the inside scoop oh okay cool play on words and you know it has the image of the ice cream and it's just trying to capture users email addresses on your website so i thought this was a good example of creative and clever content that can help you get more leads and more contacts for your email funnel later down the line of your business so, of course, another question in the chat. Mm -hmm. Someone's talking about a hair loss and hair care center that they have. And they said it's not a salon, but it's a hair health care facility with private suites. And they're kind of struggling with marketing due to the sensitivity uh, of the type of business that they're running. Um, what would be your recommendation in 
in terms of displaying um, services or, or the business. I see. Okay. Um, I've, I've, I've seen, well, I, I got another question, so I'll get to that one um, after. Give me one second. I think a video testimony will be great for that service because it can engage with your audience and your customer base without getting too deep into the sensitive details. Like, I'm sure people don't want their, like, information revealed or all the details of that. So I think if you can do a interview of clients that you work with and have them talk about their experience, you could do... Um, an introduction video where somebody's like touring your facility, you know, just getting like photos and videos of the facility itself. So you want to just show people, right, a, a visual showcase of like the before and after, like how did they, when they came in with no hair versus when they left with hair, how did they feel? And another example, I would always say, if you find challenges in your industry, look at other competitors in your industry and seeing how they're leveraging their field, right? So if you have another hair restoration service that you look up to, look at their branding and look at their videos and see what they're doing and maybe try to incorporate that into your strategy too. And some somebody- Great, yeah, great, great response. Um, and, and also people are asking you know, if they're gonna get the links. We are gonna be sharing all of the um, links to all of the tools and resources that are a part of the presentation We'll be sharing those um, in a, a separate email. Got you. And I, I know you guys have like continuing follow up questions. We can't answer like every single question, but hopefully the overview advice is good for you all. Um, I'll go ahead and continue to the next slide. So this is a YouTube cover for the brand Refinery29. I believe it's a retail shop online. For me, I really like this content because it's visually engaging and it tells a story too. Like in these overlaid text where you can see the image cut out in the shape is giving you an overview of like the type of clients and customers that they serve and it's also just a creative way to unify your brand across different platforms so if you go to your twitter if i go to your facebook if i go to your instagram right what's going to be the unifying element that's going to connect your brand together so i thought this was a great example of just how to share information and still be creative with your brand okay so question for you guys um how does your business create content for web and social digital content uh, does anybody want to share how their business is using uh, content for the web and, and social media Okay, Forrest, I think we'll move on. Okay, got you. And I was just revisiting the chat. I see somebody had a question about the name of this um, type of service. So this is just, um, this is called the pop-up banner and it can um, pop up on your website to generate leads and get emails. It's like an email collection tool that people use. Forrest, um, what, what, is your, what is your take on pop-up banners? Um, um on websites what, what are you hearing in the industry I, that's a great question so i think everybody's doing it and they're doing it for a reason right like it generates real results and it gets a lot of potential leads so i would say it's the same as um like social media right when the resurgence of it came well when it became so widely known everybody was sort of like reluctant to adopt it but as you see, it's still relevant and people are still using it. So I would say because it's so widely used, you should at least understand it and understand why people are doing it. That would be my take on it. Okay, and so let's see. So I wanted to ask how you guys create content because I was gonna give you all just a quick overview of these two platforms. I know a couple of you in the chat may be familiar with Canva and Adobe Spark. If you are, wonderful. If not, I just wanna make sure you understand what it is and how to use it. Okay, so I'm going to navigate to Canva really fast. And just really quick before I go, um, you can design presentations with it, business cards, flyers, gifts. A lot of stuff so let's go ahead and go to canva and i'll show you guys what you can do there so i'm sharing my screen 
and this will be the home page you see let me go ahead and log in really quick just so i can still with google okay all right and okay never mind i'll just do it with my email seems to have some trouble that's okay Okay, cool. So now we're in and just want to give you guys a quick overview of the stuff that you can do, right? So the great thing about Canva is that they have a lot of different templates for a lot of different types of media. So if you want to design a presentation, some animations for your social media, YouTube thumbnail, a flyer, social media posts, email headers, it's, it's a lot of stuff you can do in here. So for just like simplicity's purpose, I'll do a hmm, I'll do a Facebook cover just for sake of time. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I wanted to um go over the features that you guys can do. So my apologies. So on the left hand corner here, you can see all of the options that you have for your brand. Right. So let's say you have a business and you want to make sure all of the aspects of your designs are uniform so your logos are used your fonts are used your colors so you can go over here to this brand kit section and it's a premium feature and i think it's about 12.99 a month but with that brand kit feature you can add your fonts of your brand you can add your colors and you can add your logos so these will be assets that you can just drag and drop in your designs and it'll make your workflow so much easier. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and I'll go back to that Facebook cover that I was designing earlier. So when you go into the interface for Canva, you'll see you have a couple of options on this top toolbar right here where you have your file options where you can save documents, create new designs, a couple of options there. And they have a premium feature where you can like resize your designs to other dimensions and proportions if you want to. But you have to pay for that. That's a premium feature. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to start designing. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll through the templates that they have. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm going to scroll through the templates that they have and see what I like. So I'll grab, I'll grab this one right here. So this would be a great place to start off if I wanted to add my own pictures or change some text. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how the asset management system works here. So if you go down to your uploads, you can see you have all your assets. So any images or videos or things that you've uploaded will be like here. And it's pretty simple. Like literally you can just drag and drop and your assets will be placed here. And if you have any videos, you can drag those as well. Okay. Um, and in addition to course, is the video feature, a new feature in Canva It's recently new. Yeah. I think they recently added it within like the last two to three months. So making it easy to incorporate video, I guess, in your presentation. Mm hmm. Yep. Um, they have another panel here. If you need like stock photography or creative assets that we mentioned earlier, right? So they have a trending section over here, stuff that's just popular. And they have other categories, so like computer money, et cetera. I'll just do business since this is business. And let's say I like this picture right here. So I could just click this picture and then I could just drag it in. So for us, in terms of resolution, um, when you download your presentations or your um, files from Canva, how is the, the resolution? Is it good? Um, how do you recommend maybe correcting that? Um, so from my experience, it's usually good depending on your options, right? So if you go download, they have a lot of different options for size and resolution. So you could do a PNG, a JPEG, a PDF. So what I would suggest is just to Oh, see, it's a pro feature. So they have a feature now where you can adjust the size and the resolution of the file that you download. So from my experience, Canvas files are fine. I don't really have any issues out of them. And if you are having issues, I would like, you know, reach out to them via email and contact them or, 
you know, maybe do some Google searching on the web to see what you can find and how to correct that. But from my experience, it's been personally fine. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jerry. I appreciate you in the comments. <laughs> so, um, so right now we just dragged our image into our template and we can, you know, edit the text if we like. So I just say business, business is cool, right? That's what people think. <laughs> Business is challenging, <laughs> but uh, if we wanted to adjust our text, we could go up here and you can see our font that we have selected. So we could uh, change the font. We could also change, you know, the color of the font if we wanted to, to a different color. I'll stick with white. We can bold it, italicize it adjust the paragraphs and everything so when you're using the tool you'll get more comfortable with the interface if you already haven't but these are just some options for you um i'm going to go through a couple other parameters for you guys we have okay all right um i guess for sake of time we gotta speed it up so i will proceed back to my presentation give me one second okay in addition and canva that is great for new businesses small businesses or yeah and it's great for new businesses small businesses and growing business they have a team feature where you can have multiple contributors and collaborators so it's it's a great overall platform um this next one i'll try to move briefly through it uh this is adobe spark and it has similar function to canva so let's navigate there let me share my screen so for us in terms of budgets um, yes for small businesses and and that they should invest maybe in some content um, management and media type uh, software. Is there an estimate that you should say they should budget because we're seeing some prices of $12.99 and, and up per month? That's I think might be a recommended budget. Yeah, that, that's a great question. So um, it depends on the business, but I would say start as low as you can and then go from there right so you don't want to buy all of these software if you don't need them so the first thing i would do is do like an assessment on exactly what it is that you need right so do you need video content do you need graphics find out what you need and then find the best match that fits that need for your business so you only want to buy exactly what it is you need for a budget range i would say monthly to i would say monthly no more than like 50 to 60 bucks on content creation services and yearly maybe no more than like two to three hundred because you got other stuff you need to pay for as well so it shouldn't be a large portion of your budget okay because i know we're paying for like a canva account we have vimeo for um video and i think we have a adobe so it, it, it does add up but um I like your recommendation on really looking at uh, what the business needs, prioritizing those uh, needs and creating your budget around what you need. Not Sometimes people want to buy everybody else's products mm -hmm. because somebody else recommended, but it's not good for their business. I completely agree. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate that. So really quick, guys, this is um, Adobe Spark, and I'm sure you've all seen this homepage. We've been on here for a little while. So... A couple of things you can do with it you can make templates social media designs photos so i'll just jump in really quick to show you guys what it can do i think it's cool we have uh participants that are familiar with the software when you're familiar with it it's like you see what other people do in it if they do something that you may not be familiar with so hopefully i can surprise you guys today <laughs> So uh, if we scroll down, we can see the templates that they offer sort of similar to Canva, right? Like Instagram, social media posts, presentations, slideshows. Let me see if we view all what they got in here. Okay, so I got a couple of other stuff. For sake of time, I'll just do a quick flyer. Okay, just waiting for this to load up. Okay, and just a disclaimer, so Adobe Spark has a promotion where they're doing two months of free service. So if you're interested, it'll be free for 60 days. That's pretty good. 
So on this right hand panel over here, you can see we have all of our templates if we want to change or swap out. So I'll click this one and I'll do create from this template. Just waiting for it to load on up. Okay, cool. All right, so now we got our template in here and we have a similar toolbar, uh, similar to Canva. So if we go to design, we can see that we have a couple of options for our logo. So if we upload a logo here, we can add that. Oh, sorry about that. If we uploaded our brand's logo, we could just quickly drag and drop that into here. Well, we have the colors for it and the fonts. Let's see, what else do we have in here? Got colors. They have a lot of different color palettes if you want to explore colors and adjust that. They have different um, layouts and compositions. If you want to do a grid or a banner. So this is pretty cool. And they also have the resize feature, which is free, unlike Canva that you have to pay for. So if you want to do this for an Instagram story or change it to a landscape, you can easily do so with this feature. So I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's a quick overview of Adobe Spark. Feel free to check it out if you have time. I'll go ahead and resume back to the presentation. Let's see. So we got any questions, Sandy? Anything right now? No, I think I think we're good for now. Good if go. people want to put something in the chat box or a question, just uh, continue. Hmm. Okay. Oh, see, I'm just uh, reading the chat myself right now. Just wanted to check and see. Okay, cool. All right, so in addition to, you know, online content such as graphics, photos, designs, and flyers, that we also have uh, video editing content if you're interested in editing your videos. So on the left, we have Filmora 9. It's a free option, and it also has paid features as well. And on the right, we have Biteable, which is a web-based video editor. I'm going to show you guys Biteable because it's really simple and easy to use. So let me go ahead and click there. And let me know if you guys have questions on the pricing for these um, subscriptions as well. I know I may have missed a couple of those. So let me go ahead and log in. And let me see. Nope. Oh, sorry, that's probably the other one. It shows how many passwords you have to have, right? <laughs> so many. Okay, so when you log in, you'll see that you can... Oh, my screen is not being shared. Sorry about that. Screen sharing is paused. Okay, so maybe you guys... Okay, so you guys can see my screen now. Sorry about that. So when you log in a Biteable, this will be the navigation page you're directed to. And I'll go ahead and get started and make a video. And they have a lot of different presets for your intentions of the video. So you can use a video to promote your business, share something, communicate. I'll just use promote. And let's do find a template. So let's see what we got. Let's do, 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 do. let's do real estate. It's just an example. Okay, that's fine. Okay, all right. So let me go back really quick because I think I had another example to show you guys. Let me see, let's do create new. I think it was advertising product. Let's try that. Okay, so I'm just adjusting these parameters. I was looking for like a specific tip link. So I'll do a mobile app and I'll edit this video. Let's see. Okay, so on this left hand side, you got a lot of options here. So you can like upload your own video and they have a lot of other different videos that you can insert. You can adjust the text heading over here if you wanted to change that to say something different. Say filler text, spell filler text wrong. <laughs> Let me see. 
You can change the font. And you won't see any changes until you like save and preview it. So when you do that. Just having a little bit of a lag here. If it takes too long, I'll have to come back to it. Okay. All right. Yeah, finally loaded. Oh, wow. Okay. Just scrolling through really quick. Give me one second, guys. So this is interesting. So I used this service before, and it looks like it's a little different for some reason. I'm not sure why that happened. Yeah, it looked totally different when I did it. Hmm. Okay, so for sake of time, guys, I'm going to have to end the biteable tutorial, unfortunately. Um, I encourage you guys to check it out when you have free time. It's just a little bit of like glitches and it's taking a while to load up. So I, so Biteable is good for? It's good for creating quick videos for your brand if you don't have time to like sit down and edit and you know have like a dedicated computer for it. But it's good for video content. Just having a little bit of trouble with it right now, which is kind of bad, but it, it happens. So, so if, if a, a business needs to um, create a video, they don't want to pay for somebody to come in and have to videotape them. Um, this is a good software that they can um, use to just quickly create a video. Yes, it's good for quickly creating videos and getting content out of the door really fast. Um, as far as the pricing, it's kind of pricey depending on how you do it. So um, the yearly plan can range from like free to 15 bucks a month. And the monthly plan is about like 20 bucks a month up until 99. I would encourage you guys to try anything before you decide to buy it, but pricing is decent. So I'm gonna go back to my screen share and I'm gonna show you guys Filmore. So Filmore is pretty good. It's a little bit more involved compared to Biteable, but you have more flexibility over it. So let me go ahead and load that up really quick for you guys. Hopefully it won't take too long. Okay, so I'm loading up the software now. It's just taking a little while to load. See if we got anything in the chat. Okay, cool, cool. Good to see you guys engaging in the chat. I know it's a lot to observe and type and make sure everything is correct but thank you guys for bearing with me now Forrest, what's your recommendation on um if you're using like too many type of template looking you know content um, across your platforms do you lose the essence of it being more custom that's a great question so i have two different ways i feel about it right so templates Think of them as just like pieces to a puzzle. You can take different pieces and elements from different templates and combine it all to make it very unique. So I would say the template is always a starting point and you don't have to stick with everything in the template. You know, get creative and manipulate it a little bit. As far as the uniformity with it um, and a personal touch, as long as you have elements that are repeatable and cohesive with your brand, I think it can help merge everything together as far as your digital content. So Forrest, do you, do you recommend uh, in the beginning working with a brand specialist to really be, refine your brand? Because I see so many businesses where you go to the website, it's something else. You mm. see their business card, it says something else. They put out a flyer or they do a brochure and it it's not cohesive. What is your recommendation on when they should get that kind of brand identity or strategy place great question sandy i would definitely recommend speaking with a brand strategist or creative consultant just to help you create guidelines visually for your brand right so your fonts your logo your colors you know different instances of how you would use your brand and your logo so like for stationary how do you position your logo for your t-shirts how do you want everything to sit get all of that stuff set first right so that when you're creating a content you already know what you want to use in it it makes everything so much simpler it's like what's the best way i could put it hmm 
I don't know. It's like renovating your house first before you move into it or like cleaning your house before you do anything. Like it's a solid foundation and then you don't have to come back and change everything later. If that makes sense. Is that good for you, Sandy? Um, yes. Okay. Thank you for asking. That was a good question. So now, guys, we have a Fillmore 9 right here um, in our window. And when you open it, you know what? Actually, let me go to the website so you guys can just see how it looks before um, we download it. Because it might not make sense now. So when you go to the Fillmore website, this is what you'll see. And then when you do your free download, you'll get software that you can use on your computer. So it's pretty light on your computer. So now I'll go back to the actual software, how it looks when you open it up. So when you open it up, you'll get this panel. I'll do 16 by nine. I'll make a new project. I think this one should be a, oh, sorry, my screen is paused. Okay, so now I'm inside of Fillmore and it's a pretty easy interface to navigate. So first thing we're gonna do is import some footage. So I'll go here and click on this plus icon Okay. All right. So for so you're you're recommending um, so they're importing raw footage that they took with their video camera, their smartphone. Where are they getting this footage from? Yeah, great question, Sandy. Sorry if I missed anything or skipped over anything. So you can get this footage from your iPhone, from taking photos, from videos. Um, you could get this footage online if you want stock footage or stock photography for your videos. It's a lot of different uh, places and websites you can get this from. So what so I also in terms of length of video, uh, what do you recommend? What are people um, staying focused on? What loses their attention span? Um, so if for length of video, I would say anything from 30 seconds to a minute 30 max. You know, you can go even shorter than 30 seconds, but usually around like 15 to 20 seconds, people are kind of tuning out. And sorry, my mouse has gone invisible for some reason. Let me see if I can. OK, there we go. I got my mouse back. So I'm just going to import two video clips really quick. It's importing now. And I'm just going to give you guys a basic um, tutorial of how you, you can edit your video. So I'm going to take this video from here. I'm going to drag it into my timeline. And now you can see I have a preview of that footage on my right hand side in this little window. So over here, this red line, this is called my playhead. And if I grab my playhead and scroll, I can like scroll through my footage and kind of see, you know, how everything is looking. So that's looking pretty cool. Um, in addition to that, they have a lot of different panels up here at the top for easily editing stuff. So say I want to add some music. I'll go to my audio tab. They have a whole bunch of like songs that come with the software. So if I hit um, download or, oh, you know what? Actually, um, I can just drag this right into my timeline. I don't have to download it. So I can drag that in. I'm just gonna download the content. That's pretty cool. Okay. Okay, cool. So we got that um there. And now we see our music is really long compared to our video. So if I want to zoom out, I can go up here to our bar where it has the plus and minus, and I can zoom out. So I can see my whole timeline is about two minutes. So that's fine. So I'll zoom back in. And if I play it. So this is a great this is a great example. So it's a lot for my computer to process the video and the audio at one time. So a feature they have in here, you can lower the playback resolution to speed up the play. So if I go here and I go from one half of the resolution to one eighth of the resolution, it should play back faster. So if I hit play now. So it's a little bit better, still a little choppy, but that's okay. It's just for tutorial purposes. So editing stuff is pretty easy. Um, I can make my audio panel a little bit bigger if I want. If I want to adjust, uh, sorry, let me move this playhead for you guys. Let me click here so I can move it. If I want to like fade my audio in and out, I can click 
I can navigate to the edge of my audio track and you see I get these two arrows left and right. If I click that and drag it, you can see my audio will be faded nice and smoothly. And you see on my playhead, there's this option for these scissors. If I click on this, it'll cut my video and my audio into two. So let's say I wanted to like cut this and then just make like this section a little bit lower in volume. I could do that. So just some examples. Um, I'll give you guys a few more features and we'll go ahead and navigate out of this. So aside from your music, if you want to add titles, it's relatively simple too. So I'll just navigate through my title presets and I'll click this one. So if I click this title preset and drag it over top of my video footage, you can see the titles now created. So for in terms of businesses using uh, videos, because you don't see, you, you know you don't see a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, do you think people are um, apprehensive or maybe can't afford to pay for the, the the software or pay for somebody to design a video? Because a lot of our small businesses say we need more uh, traction on our website. We need to you know get more customers or clients coming to our site. But when you go to their site. There is no video um, mm. anywhere um, telling about their business, testimonies, a lot of the things that you recommended that they incorporate. Um, what do you think is, well, some of the apprehension or the challenges of why people maybe aren't using um, videos? Um, so the challenge is, the main challenge is time, right? People don't have time to learn new things and create it in addition to everything else they're doing. So I would say you have to think of like the most cost effective and efficient way to produce the content, right? Like if you don't have the time to do it, maybe, or if, if, you, don't, if you don't have the time or the money to do it, it's kind of tricky, right? I don't have like a one size fits all answer, but hmm, this is my answer for you, Sandy. I think it's best for businesses to clearly define the problem that they have and the objective that they want to solve when they lay that foundation it'll help them craft a strategy to get what it is that they want so if you're going to somebody's website and they don't have good video content you know we need more video content let's think of ways to produce it cheaply or time efficiently if that means paying somebody if that means getting an intern or if that means learning to solve for yourself try to give yourself as many options to solve the solution as you can. That would be like my open feedback for it. Okay. Thank, thanks for us. It's a great answer. Okay. Um, I'll spend like a couple more minutes in this software and then we'll go ahead and continue. So we added this title element here and you can see that when we play our footage back, it's like a little animation and you can kind of scroll up through and see when it comes like in and out. And there's a lag, there's a lag in here, but don't worry about that, that's okay. So you can add titles, you can add um, transitions, they're pretty simple, you just click it, drag it onto your footage, and you can see if I scroll to the end of this clip, it'll start to dissolve. So for so some of the transitions similar to um, PowerPoint? Yeah, similar to PowerPoint, um, Adobe Premiere, they all kind of like build off of one another. So they're really simple, really easy to use. They have uh, effects as well. And pretty much same thing, like you drag it in and then you can see this is my effect right here. So if I click on this for my effect, actually if I double click it, you see I can like resize it so I can make it bigger, make it smaller. I can increase the intensity of it, make it super blurry or make it very subtle. So there are a lot of tools and it's a relatively like simple use, user interface to navigate. And last thing, the pricing. So let me show you guys how I did that. So if you choose to export your video, they'll, the pricing options will come up, right? So if you have a free plan with this Filmora 9 software, you'll be able to export your video, but you'll have a watermark on it. Um, they have an annual plan where it's $45 for the entire year, a lifetime, and a bundle. They always try to sell you all the stuff you don't need. So <laughs> just a pricing overview if you're interested. I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint slide, and we're going to keep on going. Okay. 
cool so let's take a quick break i know we've been talking and presenting and designing so um are we still good on time sandy as far as our um okay um, it, any any questions um so far any comments from our, our businesses um anybody want to share um any challenges they're currently having in terms of identifying the right tools to incorporate uh, in your business. I know a lot of people are reopening their doors um, in the midst of COVID-19. Um, any um, challenges you have in terms of marketing, um, trying to keep your existing clients and trying to get new clients? I see a comment where uh, someone says on the subject of video, mm. many people have fear of actually appearing in a video. And so sometimes people don't want, they don't want to be in the video. So mm -hmm. what do you recommend they do in terms of if they don't want to appear in that video? Oh yeah, that's fine. Um, it's a lot of options, right? So if you pay attention to like, you know, commercials or TV, there are a lot of um, like their animations. So if somebody doesn't want to be in the video, they could do a voiceover and you can have like a visual to match what they're saying. Right. So you don't have to do fancy animation. You can even get some stock footage so they could be talking with their voiceover and then the stock footage is playing to communicate the message. Um, that's a great option. Another one would be just to animate it, but that may take more time. I found that if I place a plain video, people won't look at that. But if I'm in the video doing something, I'll get a lot more hits. It seems like people want to see um, the person who represents the business um, live in the video. Mm, I agree. What, your take? what have you seen? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, people just want to have like a personal connection and feel like, you know, they can have a close relationship with you despite the distance but um that's a great option another one too um you know podcasts are very popular if you don't want to be physically present you could do a podcast as well to like sort of capture your experiences that you've been going through Um, another comment somebody put, said explainer videos are pretty popular now what are some of the the best programs I guess some of the programs you recommended here are they great programs to create your own that you're covering now yeah um, so biteable is actually a really good video content creator for that for like overview videos and instructional videos on your brand I was having some glitches with it uh, Filmora is also really good it just gives you more flexibility and control over exactly what you want to say so i think those two platforms are good now Forrest, what are the young people using in college in terms of video oh that's a great question so as far as video software they're using the adobe creative suite um adobe premiere pro adobe after effects they're pretty much using that ecosystem they're also using a final cut pro and a couple of people use um, DaVinci Resolve and there's always a new software coming out. So you may see something made on like iMovie or an app on somebody's phone, but there's also always new technology to create the products that are coming out. Okay, so yeah, so I think, thanks so much for that feedback. So I think we can kind of move on. Oh, gosh, I got a question about uh, DaVinci. So Tisha, so um, DaVinci Resolve is a video editing software used by um, like industry professionals. They like to use it for like color grading. And it's a great system because it's stable and all of your content loads really fast. So um, I'll try to include it in the list of links. I'll add DaVinci Resolve there so you can check that out. OK, all right. You said we're good to go, Sandy? Okay, got you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay, content automation. All right, so, so far we talked about your brand's identity, having creative assets, and creating the content. So now that you've gone through this journey of creating all your stuff, you want to automate it so that you can get time back and make your life easier. So 
if you have a business and you have social media platforms, you should rarely be posting on one platform at a time, like one by one. So like I post on Instagram, then I post on Facebook, then I post on Twitter. You shouldn't be doing that, right? So using content automation, you can save a lot of time and post to all of those platforms at once for like a whole month in advance if you want to. So um, with content automation, it's good to dedicate like maybe one to two hours per week to schedule your content and scheduling can give you time to work on other things because you got to work on other stuff okay all right this is going this is going to make sense i promise you <laughs> so the way i like to view content automation is like a grocery store shopping experience right so let's say you go to the grocery store and you bought everything one by one so you go to the grocery store, you buy your paper towels, you come back home, you go to the grocery store again, you buy your juice, and you come back home. <laughs> that would be silly, right? Like you wouldn't do that. That's obnoxious. Instead, what you would do is make a list of everything you want to get and then just buy everything at one time. <laughs> so I use this analogy to just parallel back to content automation, right? You want to post all of your stuff at one time as opposed to doing it individually one by one. And another example of this is just a social media content calendar or like an overview. It gives you an overview of everything you have to post and your whole month so you can compartmentalize exactly what you want to say. Okay, so now we're going to go into a question. So how is your business currently managing its social media accounts? Let's see, let me get in the chat. Anybody wanna chime in? Oh yeah, if you wanna like, uh, who's sweet? Okay, who's sweet? Now, now Forrest, a lot, we've heard a lot of information of today and a lot of our businesses might be small businesses mm -hmm. so they have to manage their content their their videos their um, instagram their social media mm -hmm. a, a lot of stuff how do you organize all of this um, in terms of a, a small business yeah it's easier said than done right it's not going to be a one size fits all but if you own a business, you know the power of like a schedule. So I think it's really about working as efficiently as possible and using the tools that gets you the maximum return on investment, right? So if I'm posting one by one, let me test a content automation tool that can post for me in a week or a month and see how much time that saves me. So it's not that you can't do it, it's just that you have to change the habit to get you toward where you wanna be. So my advice would just be like scheduling, planning, and um, efficiency. And we got a couple questions in here about where to find the information or the sites and the social media calendar. I'll get to that momentarily. I got you guys, no worries. But is that um, good for your answer, Sandy? Yes, that's fine. Okay, got you. Cool, cool. So, um, so really quick, I'm just going to go forward really fast. Don't worry. So these are all of the social media content automation software that we're going to be talking about. I'm going to leave links at the end so you can check out each one of them. But um, the information form will just be like on the web. So let me go back to the first one. So I'm just going to go over each software one by one, give you the features that it offers and a quick overview of what you can expect. So the first content automation tool is called Social Pilot. And one thing you can do is like schedule post. Um, you can connect up to 50 different social media accounts. It has social media analytics for Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. It has a social media calendar, right? So what a social media calendar allows you to do is have a monthly view of all of your content that you want to post. And it allows you to schedule each piece of content on each day and it's basically like think about it like the social media calendar is no different from your calendar on outlook or google it has everything you need to do and when you need to do it it's the same thing for posting your content um it has analytics reporting 
PDF format with white label. White label just means that you can add your own logo. You can add certain things about your brand and customize it if you want to. They also have a feature called social inbox where you can respond to all of your Facebook messages through this specific platform as opposed to having to log into Facebook itself. So, so for us in the midst of COVID-19, um, do you see people navigating more to managing a more sophisticated social media calendar or? Um, I think content is more present now because everybody's available to consume content. So um, I would say it would be best to use like scheduling or automation tools just to like have consistency with your audience to interact with them on a daily basis. But since COVID, I would assume that it's picked up, you know, that would, that would make sense logically, but I can't say I've like personally seen the evidence for it. <laughs> okay. So I know we're getting close to our, um, close time. So we're gonna have to speed through it. Yes. Okay. No, no. Yeah, a few more. I know you wanted to get to the email uh, marketing just to highlight a few of those packages. I think that would be great. Okay, sure, sure. So um, don't worry if you have any questions about these software, guys. We're going to include the links to each one so you can check them out and visit the websites. Um, but for sake of time, we're going to fast forward to the end of our presentation and try to focus on online web presence and email marketing. So I'll try to touch over these really quick for you. So your online web presence is basically very similar to your physical identity, right? Like when you meet people face to face, you want them to see the best version of yourself and all that you have to offer. Now your online web presence should be the same, right? For your business, you want people to see the best side of your business and the best products and services that you have to offer. It makes it easier for them to buy your products and have access to you and it makes it easier to build relationships with customers when they can easily find and access you so i think the most important one that we need to touch on here was probably google my business so if you guys aren't already familiar with google my business it's a service that allows you to list information about your business on google so if people search your business they can see when you're open your hours your location some images and this is a really good way just to get your brand out there and give you exposure if you already haven't uh, signed up for it so i'm going to go back to my presentation and let's see the next one um so facebook recently announced this new feature called facebook shop if you have a Facebook or Instagram account, it allows customers to buy directly from your Facebook page and check out right there. So if you go through these photos, you can see Ink Meets Paper is an online Facebook page and they have the option to view their shop right here. So if you go there, you see the products they have. Then you can see the additional products with the description. And if you want to check out through Facebook, you can literally pay and check out immediately through Facebook. So this is a game changer because a lot of people are on social and they see your products, but they don't want to go to your website and buy it because it takes too much time. As lazy as that may sound, a lot of people feel that way. <laughs> and in addition to that, they have the same thing on Instagram because Facebook owns Instagram. It's called Instagram shop. So you can set up your Instagram and people can buy products directly from you as well. Uh, let's see. This was a video to show it, but I'm going to skip it. And this is just a quick overview. So if you want to set up Facebook shop, you just need a Facebook account and a Facebook business page, a link to a valid bank account and a tax identification number. Instagram is similar. You have to have your Facebook business account linked to your Instagram so that the two can be interconnected and they basically have the same features. Okay. All right, let me see if we got any questions. Scheduling. Um, I saw a question. So a lot of the social media content automation platforms, they have integrations with different platforms, right? So like Hootsuite has an integration with Dropbox, Canva. So you can like import assets from there and make the workflow optimally easy. I'll go ahead and keep on going. 
Um, this next one I wanted to touch on really quick. This is the Google marketing platform. And this is helpful for your business. If you want to get website analytics for your site, you want to track your visitors, you want to increase your digital footprint of your business and know exactly what's going on. This is a great resource. So I'm just going to go to the website really fast and give you guys a quick glance of how to look. So they have a section dedicated for small businesses on here and you can browse through their analytics, survey options. They have data, um, a data studio where you can, you know, jump through all of your analytics and insights. So just some quick information. So I will recommend if you guys are interested in using um, the Google products such as like analytics or the data studio service for your business I would personally reach out to somebody to have them set it up with you I've worked with Google Ads myself and it was I'm, I'm just gonna be real with you guys it was incredibly difficult to use even for myself like it was kind of a headache but it can provide a lot of value to your business so if you are interested i will recommend having somebody help you set it up and coach you through it it'll save you a lot of time okay i'm gonna go back to my powerpoint and this is our last section is going to be on email marketing so i'm going to try to make this as helpful and easy to understand as possible so email marketing is helpful because it helps you build relationships with prospects leads and current customers now, as far as effectiveness, email marketing rivals social media from a customer acquisition opportunity perspective. So if you think about the money you spend, if you spend for every dollar that you spend on email marketing, it generates about thirty eight dollars back for your business. So the return on investment for email marketing is immense and definitely incentivized to get into it if you haven't. Now, as far as the priorities, right, think about it. All the information you receive today is like a funnel. So at the top of the funnel, you want to have your brand, your identity and your business ready to be presented to the public first. Then once you get that set, you can create content to move your customers down the funnel. Right. So they get to know your business. You got intro videos and content to show about your brand. They get to know you more you know, testimonials and product reviews. And then when they get to the end of the funnel, they want to buy your product and you want to keep in touch with them. So email marketing is the end of the customer funnel because you have the information and you have your customer to be retained. So this is the end just to give you perspective on that. So these are a few um, email marketing platforms and software. I'm sure a lot of you are probably familiar with MailChimp. Um, Constant Contact is really popular for small businesses. And Unbounce is a new one. So um, with MailChimp, you can design your emails, have analytic reports, templates. Um, you can create landing pages, sign up forms, ads on Facebook, Google. And they have a website builder as well. Constant Contact is very similar, has a lot of overlapping features. And lastly, Unbounce. I'm going to go to the Unbounce website really quick because it's easier to show rather than explain. So let me navigate there really fast so you guys can check this out. So Unbounce is a website dedicated to generating more leads and more conversions for your business. So they have a designer where you can create. OK, got you. So they have a designer where you can create landing pages. Um, you know, pop up bars, etc. We're running short on time, so I got to go back. I'm going to touch on these last three slides. They should take no more than two minutes. So really quick for email marketing, I wanted to talk about landing pages, right? So landing pages are specific pages that can lead your customers to a specific product or service and offer them to take action on a, on a specific thing. It can help you receive traffic from a specific source such as the ad campaign or email campaign if you're running an ad you want people to go to your landing page and it can be used in combination with your website all this is going to make sense with a short visual so just bear with me and lastly we have a website pop-ups and sticky bars so we talked about these earlier so these are um present 
when you navigate to a web page and they'll pop up to show you a relevant offer that can help you as the customer. And the last one is sticky bars. They stick to your web page as you browse and they show you relevant information to keep it top of mind. So I'm going to show you some examples and we're going to close out. So here is an example of a landing page, right? So this is very specific. It's about an ebook and they really want you to sign up and give your information. So you're getting emails and websites from your customers so that you can market to them later on. One thing that's very important about a landing page is that it doesn't have any external links as a website would. So I'll show you an example of this. So this right here is another example of a landing page and you see it doesn't have any like home about visit us. It's just get offer and enter your email. A landing page can also have a link to your actual website as well. So I'm going to go one step further. So this right here is a home page. So I know we're short on time. Let me try to make sure this makes sense for you. So landing page doesn't have any links or information at the top for your business to navigate to. It only has one specific thing you want to fill out and complete. It can have a link to your website as well. So this is a home page on a website. So you see how this has how it works. How is who is it for more blog? This is what a website has your your website and your home page has this. But a landing page doesn't have these options. It only is centered towards getting your customer to do one thing. So, of course, what I'm hearing is a landing page is important, maybe for a call to action for business um, to get something quickly across for customers and clients to do something. Yes, absolutely. Right. So let's say you're running an ad campaign and you want to increase signups for an event. A landing page would be good for that because they only sign up for the event. And you can use it with your website, too, if you want people to go there after they sign up. So you can from your landing page, visit the actual website as well. But good question, Sandy. I thought this was relevant and helpful because it really helps generate a lot of leads for businesses. And this is an example of a pop up bar that we saw earlier. So if you go to this website, it's a shopping website. This will pop up and it'll try to give you a relevant offer that you can use as a customer. So like five dollars off, ten dollars off. So this is a good way to get customer information as well. And this is the last slide so this concludes our presentation so i just want to let you guys know all the resources and online links that were mentioned in this presentation they will be emailed to you within 24 hours so we're going to have a google doc with all of our links so you can check out each one it's going to be categorized by the type of content it is and how it can help your business so don't worry we'll send it to you guys and if you have any questions hope sandy's okay <laughs> please email sandy yes. yeah <laughs> please and, and also the decline and diversity division the office of central services will uh, be following up and be in touch with all the participants as well so um we're going yes. to the screen with the contact information for the supply and diversity yeah good afternoon. Yeah, thank this you so sandy. much thank you sandy we want to also thank our featured guest here our facilitator mr gibbons uh, for the valuable content as part of our series. As communicated previously, we also have a number of uh, excellent uh, webinars that are forthcoming, like on July 15th with the Business Development 101, uh, writing on effective, uh, writing a, an effective uh, capability statement on July 17th. And these are just tentative dates for now, but you might want to put a save the date on July 15th and 17th. And we have a series that will last through the latter part of August as previously discussed. So we want to thank you all for the valuable content as mentioned and for all the participants and for the interaction. And please, if you need to reach us, this is our contact information. Thank you for posting that Sandy with the phone number and we will respond to you normally within 24 hours. One is an also mentioned lastly, uh, we will be sending out uh, surveys uh, for these webinars. So please respond and get them back to us as expeditiously as possible. We would appreciate that. And we thank you all for participating and 
look forward to seeing you soon virtually. Thank you. Cool. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. it was, this was a wonderful time. Okay. Thank you, Forrest. And we look forward to connecting with everybody on future workshops and trainings. Okay. Sounds good.